Hello everyone, welcome back to Dead King Cards. Today we'll be taking a look at some problems from the USA Map Olympiad 2024. A very interesting comment is that most people say that this year's USAMO seems to be a lot harder than previous years. Fortunately, problem 1 is still as manageable as before, and I think problem 4 myself personally feel that actually it, it is quite a bit harder than uh, previous year's problem 4. So without further ado, let us take a look at these interesting problems from the USA MO2024. So for problem 1, we have a number theory problem. Find all integers n greater than or equal to 3, such that the following property holds. If we list the divisors of n factorial in increasing order as d1, d2 until dk, then we have d2 minus d1 smaller than or equal to d3 minus d2, Dot, 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 smaller than or equal to dk minus dk minus 1. So this part here, uh, writing out the divisors in increasing order, seems to remind some of us of the IMO2023 problem. So a very interesting uh, throwback to that problem. But this time is about n factorial, uh, the divisors of n factorial. And what is this inequality, uh, this string of inequality saying here? Well, basically saying, if you look at the uh, gaps between successive divisors, they form a non-decreasing sequence. So quite an uh, interesting uh, problem, never seen something uh, like this before. So as usual, uh, I like to start tackling a problem by looking at small cases. So we start with n equals 3, which is the smallest uh, test case over here. Well, 3 factorial is 6 and the divisors are 1, 2, 3, 6, and the gaps indeed form a non-decreasing sequence. So n equals 3 works. n equals 4, 4 factorial is 24. You can just write out the divisors, and again, you check that, okay, the gap seems to be non-decreasing. So this works as well. Not very interesting so far. Let's take a look at n equals 5. Ah, okay, this is slightly longer, uh, has a slightly longer list of divisors, but nothing that is not manageable. I mean, Obviously, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are going to be divisors, and then the rest is uh, quite easy to write out. And then you realize that, oh, the gap between 15 and 20 is 5, but after that, 20 to 24 is just 4, so it violates the inequality. So n equals 5 doesn't work. Now, let's write out one more so that we can get uh, inspiration on how to tackle this problem. So for n equals 6, of course, the divisor list is very long, but you don't have to go very far before you realize that n equals 6 doesn't work. because over here, you basically have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7 is a prime that is bigger than uh, 6, so it won't be in a, a divisor of n factorial. But immediately after that, you have two consecutive divisors. So the gap here, obviously, is bigger than 1, and then the gap here is 1. So this string of inequality fails. So this might give you an idea. What if I can uh, cheese my way to this by saying that, okay, for maybe n that is big enough, if I'm able to find a non-divisor followed by a pair of consecutive divisors, then I will know that that n will not work because if there's a non-divisor here, clearly your divisors will have at least skip past uh, the non-divisor and have a gap of bigger than one, but if you find a pair of causative divisors that's bigger than this non-divisor, then further down the road you have a gap of 1, and that will clearly violate the required inequalities. And in fact, you can even make your life easier by instead of just looking for a random like non-divisor, you can focus on finding a prime that is bigger than n. So, what we want to show now is, okay, maybe for a whole class of n that is uh, big enough, I'll be able to find a prime that is bigger than n, and then find a pair of consecutive divisors that is larger than this prime, and I'll be done. Because this prime bigger than n is definitely not a divisor, it'll create a gap. But here, the gap is equal to 1. So, how do we do this? I mean, finding a prime bigger than n leads you naturally to think about Bertrand's postulate, which says that there at least a prime p uh, such that p lies between n and 2n. So this seems to fit the bill pretty well. Uh, by having 2n here, it gives us a lot of space from 2n to n factorial to work with to find these consecutive divisors. 
So can we find a pair of quantitative dividers that is uh, at least 2n? And indeed, uh, there are many ways to do this. So one of the more direct ways is to just construct. So uh, if n is odd, consider n minus 1 square and n minus 2 times n. These are obviously consecutive because basically this is uh, n minus 1 plus 1 times n minus 1 minus 1. So that is n minus 1 squared minus 1 squared, right? So these two are consecutive. And n minus 2 and n are clearly in the list from 1 to n. So this means that this is the divisor of n factorial. Whereas here, you need to be a bit careful because n minus 1 is, from, uh, is in the list from 1 to n, but it doesn't mean that n minus 1 squared will be a divisor of n factorial unless you uh, prove it more rigorously, right? So in this case, the good thing is you can actually, because uh, n is odd, so n minus 1 is even, you can write this as uh, 2 times n minus 1 over 2. So this part is n minus 1, and then you have n minus 1. Now you can see that these are all distinct terms from uh, lying in the list from 1 to n, provided that n is at least 7. Yeah, so if n is at least 7, then uh, n minus 1 over 2 will be uh, 3. So 3 is distinct from 2. So now these are clearly in the list from 1 to n, which means by putting them together, you can tell that this definitely divides n factorial. Okay, so how about the case where n is even? So the same idea, we have n minus 2 squared, Compact n minus 3 times n minus 1, these are obviously consecutive. Again, n minus 3, n minus 1, obviously in the list from 1 to n, so this product obviously divides n factorial. And as for this, n minus 2 square, you can write 2 times n minus 2 over 2 times n minus 2. And these are distinct if n is at least 8, because then this will be 3, right? So now uh, we have basically proven that we can find these consecutive divisors, and it's a very simple exercise to also check that. These are obviously bigger, uh, or at least uh, 2n, when this uh, bounds hold as well. So this means that for n equals, or larger than or equal to 7, uh, there's no n that works. And we have checked earlier in the previous slide that 3 and 4 works, 5 and 6 doesn't work. So the final answer is just n equals 3 and n equals 4. So that is all to problem 1, and I hope you agree with me that this is uh, still a pretty manageable problem one. But now let us take a look at problem four, which I personally think is quite hard, but maybe some of you think that this is still a manageable problem four. So here we have a combinatorial problem. We let m and n be positive integers. A circular necklace contains m and bits, each either red or blue. It turned out that no matter how the necklace is cut into m blocks of n consecutive bits, each block had a distinct number of red bits. So, for example, over here, I have a construction where I, if I cut into three blocks uh, of four consecutive bits, the number of distinct uh, the number of red bits in each block is distinct. Here there's 1, here there's 2, and here there's 0. And no matter how I cut it, for example, this is another way of cutting. I have 2, 1, and 0. Again, they are all distinct. So this necklace, you can check that no matter how you cut into 3 blocks of 4 consecutive bits, then each block has a distinct number of n bits. Uh, you are supposed to determine all possible values of the ordered pair mn. So in this case, 3, 4 is a valid uh, pair because there is a construction, namely this construction, such that no matter how I cut it into n blocks of n consecutive bits, uh, each block has a distinct number of red bits. So I hope that is uh, clear enough what the problem is saying. Uh, let's do a bit of uh, exploration. So rather than drawing out circular bits and visualizing the cutting, which is quite hard to visualize sometimes, I prefer to write out the arrangement in terms of 1 and 0. So 1 here will be a red bit, 0 is a blue bit. So I have my 12 bits uh, just listed in order, 1, 1, 0, 0, and so on. And then I just put another copy here because it's always circular, right? So you'll go on and on and on. So in terms of the blocks, if we cut into uh, 3 blocks of length 4, we are supposed to check that no matter how we do that cutting, the number of red bits is distinct, right? So 
I do the first cutting, the number of red beads in it is 210, they are distinct, and then I just check, okay, if I shift the cutting by 1, what is the number of red beads now? It's 201, and shift by 1 is 102, shift by 1 is 102. So now that I've shifted all possible configurations, I and I check that each row is all distinct, then I certify, okay, this way of uh, writing 1 and 0 satisfy the problem, so 3, 4 is a valid pair. Okay, so I'll be working with strings of 1s and 0s, and uh, for each way of cutting, I'll list out a row of the red counts, and I need to check that they are distinct. Okay, right off the bat, I think it is quite easy to see that you need n to be at least n minus 1. I mean, that is not too hard to see. Basically, you have uh, n blocks here, right? And n is the length inside. Now, the possible score, which is the number of red beads for a block, is either 0, 1, 2, 3, or until n, right? You cannot have more than that. So, if n is too small, namely less than n minus 1, then your number of possible scores is too little to have uh, all n blocks being distinct, right? So, if n is less than n minus 1, then less than n possible score, there are less than n possible score to appear across n blocks, but people hold some score will repeat. And therefore, obviously, that m common n will not work. The harder part is to realize that actually all n greater than or equal to n minus 1 works. So this is the first difficult part of the problem because you don't know what is the possible answer. And frankly speaking, it's actually quite hard to come up with a construction that works for any uh, m comma n, even if it satisfies this. So it, it might not be intuitive to you that all pairs work and you try to then focus on coming up with a construction for all pairs. You, yeah, personally for me, I wasted a, a lot of time trying to figure out what is the answer first before I even figure out do I need to disprove or prove uh, the answers. So, let's take a look at the construction. Now, let's focus on the simplest case, which is when n is just equal n minus 1. We want to show eventually n greater than equal to n minus 1 works, but let's start with equality. And the reason why this is simpler is because basically, uh, you have your m blocks, and if n is m minus 1, you know that for all the red counts to be distinct, you are forced to have the red counts being 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 until n, all appearing exactly once. So this is why this simpler case might be easy. We, we know what all the red scores must be. So if uh, that might give you a bit of hint on how you might want to do the construction. So for me, for this construction, I'm going to have my rate scores being n, n minus 1, n minus 2 until 0. And the way I put my rate score is, I'll just put all the ones at the front of the block. So specifically, my construction is n ones, then n minus 1 ones and a 0, then n minus 2 ones and 2 zeros, and so on, until all n is 0. I need to check that this construction works. So let's do that. Obviously, before doing any displacement, uh, the scores are from n to 0. They are all distinct, very good. Now, checking the after the displacement is quite tricky. So I'll just go through quickly and feel free to uh, pause the video and check it more rigorously on your own. So the way let's do it is let's focus on first the first block and then consider what happens when you displace it step by step. So you can see that because we have a whole string of 1s here, when you displace this block, uh, step by step, right? You, the rate score is still going to remain n. Not so interesting yet. Let's take a look at the second block. If we displace it step by step, what's going to happen? Because of the string of n minus, uh, the string of ones here, it will actually stay as n minus one for a while. It will continue to overlap this zero, but it will any one that is lost here, it will be picked up here. So it will stay as n minus one for a while until the last position, where actually it will be. 0 until 0. So the score will drop by 1 in the last possible displacement position. So by now, maybe you'll get a hang of it. The third block, if you displace it right, you'll realize that 
it will be n minus 2 all the way until the second last one it will actually drop to n minus 3. So by now hopefully you get a pattern it will the score will stay the same until it hits the zero in the next block uh, and in which case the score will drop by one so you continue this pattern eventually the second last one will be one zero 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 now the last block is a bit interesting because when you displace it starts to push into the front of the list and with the displacement you get one more one each time so you have zero one until m minus one so now you can check that each row indeed is still have distinct uh, rate scores so in this case uh very nicely the part when when the last column is uh k uh you you realize that uh the column that originally had k dropped to k minus one and there's actually still no overlap so feel free to think about it further but hopefully this is clear enough to convince you that uh the rows are all distinct and this construction work okay but how about n bigger to n than equal to n minus 1? So this again is slightly tricky but not as difficult as the earlier construction. The idea is you just need to insert a whole bunch of zeros at the start of each block until you get your length being n. Okay, sorry, this shouldn't be n, but basically if n was n minus 1, this was the construction. Then now when n is bigger than n minus 1, whatever additional uh entries you need to put you just add zeros at the front of the block until you get the correct length of n and what this does if you add the zeros you can check that the scores will stay like this as you displace the block until you start to go past all the zeros so uh basically the scores will all be this row for quite a while until you go past the zero then you'll start this pattern again so you can check this and I agree with you, this is definitely a pain to write out in the contest itself. So I think a few people commented that, yeah, this is quite painful to write, even if you get past the hurdle of coming up with the construction, which I actually think is not easy to do so. Yeah. So what do you think of this year's USA MO problems one and four? For problem four, I confess, I actually took way longer than one hour to even come up with the construction. Then if I have to write it, I cannot imagine how to even write it in such a short period of time. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Stay tuned to the channel for more math videos and see you soon.